We are live. Woo! How exciting. Oh, okay. I'm going to let some people roll in here because I know I just opened the waiting room up. But come on in. There's room for you, wouldn't you? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on in. Oh, it's going to welcome to this party. And it's directly at, so it's noon for you, 11 a.m. for me. So it's like this, these women, they always make the day. I love a little webinar right in the middle of the day like this. It's always fun. Breaks it up a little bit, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, good old times. But I'll go ahead and get started here so that I know that we have so much to cover. So I'll jump in. But first, just want to welcome everybody uh, to this Travify Academy webinar with our special guest, Lisa Fay, who I'm going to introduce um, in just a bit. There she is. We're excited to have her here. Um, but first, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Stephanie Grice, and I am a marketing education coordinator here at Travify. Um, so before we jump in, I just want to share a little little bit about Travify Academy and just what to expect because we're doing something really unique right now. We're doing, a, I like to refer to it as like a virtual conference. So what I've been telling everybody, it's like three days of jam packed stuff, super fun. Um, and we're on day two. So I hope some of you that are on here got to hang out with us last, uh, or yesterday, last week, yesterday, um, and, and got to join one of the three webinars. And then we still have, we have today's webinar with Lisa, and then we still have one more. And then tomorrow we have two followed up with happy hour for trivia. Oh, my what? favorite. Oh yeah. Tomorrow, oh, yeah. Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a good time. Lisa, are you going to be joining us? You think you can make it? I am. Can, is it okay if I bring a cocktail to happy hour? Oh yes. You must bring a cocktail. Or no, if you, if you there. don't want a cocktail, just bring your favorite drink, you know, but yes, Perfect. you must. And it's kind of a must, I would say, because it makes it good times, you know, and then we'll see, I'll bring you on too, Lisa, so that you'll be a panelist. So that way, you can you can chat with everybody. So be okay. have fun. I know. Yeah, it's gonna be a really good time. Um, but okay, sorry, my Zoom kept jumping and making my screen larger for some reason. So I'm gonna move that over there. Um, but first, um, okay. So without uh, further ado, what I do want to share though, really quick, is if this is your first time joining a Travify Academy webinar, um, I just want to quickly share that Travify Academy is a free educational resource to further Travify's mission to power the success of travel professionals. So our team, we have the privilege to work with thousands of amazing travel advisors and organizations daily, um, just like with Lisa. And so that's how we met her. And it's super awesome that we get to partner with, um, you know, these industry experts like Lisa and bring them in to bring this powerful content and educational webinars just to help you grow your business. So that's what's really cool about Travify Academy. But it is really important to note that these webinars are not commercial in nature to specifically promote any of our industry speakers or panelists, including Travify, in which Travify Academy content does not focus on uh, Travify's products. So really what we're here to do is just, again, help you grow your business. And especially with the time we're in, in 2022, 2023, I mean, it's going to be big, big time for Travel Rebound is going to be insane. So that's what we really hope that this helps there or helps you get ready for that. And you can also find other um, webinars, podcasts. Lisa's been on a podcast with us as well at academy.travify.com. So definitely check that out. Um, it is also important to note that these are being recorded. So if you go to academy.travify.com, um, you can watch this replay um, up there. So that'll be available to you. Um, and then we also will have time at the end for Q&A with Lisa. So there is that Q&A um, spot with Zoom. So if you have questions throughout, if something sparks and you're like, oh, I wonder what is, you know, what would she think of this? Um, ask that question. And I'll be uh, helping to guide those Q&A at the end so I can get, gather those for her. So now, okay, with all that being said, it was a mouthful. So we had to, all that, but now I'm really excited to introduce Lisa and allow her to take it away. But first, I just want to introduce Lisa because it's just a really cool background that she comes from. So I want to say, you know, what happens when you combine a career in corporate America with an MBA from a top business school and improv comedy? Then you add in a passion to learn and teach 
And what you get is a smart, experienced storyteller and author that shares um, her unique perspective in a way that can make you laugh as you learn. So it's really awesome to talk to Lisa because Lisa went from college to Coca-Cola, and that is where you get um, the corporate tit- or word in the title of this webinar. Um, but now she's a travel advisor with Valerie Wilson Travel and is also a successful speaker, a consultant, and a leader. But as I mentioned, she also uses improv in her work. How cool is that? So Lisa, I'm going to let you take it away. I'm, I'm really excited for the presentation because I'm, I'm really excited to hear more. Well, I am so excited to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun. And, um, you know, a lot of people um, know me from one side of my work or another. They know me as a speaker or an author, or they know me as a travel advisor. So the opportunity to really talk about both of those things is awesome today. So I did spend a little bit about me. I did spend 30 years at the Coca-Cola company. I lived all over the country and I got to work all over the world, which is one of the things that really um, helped me get a love for travel. And I spent 10 years in sales, 10 years in marketing, and 10 years in training and development with the Coca-Cola company. I also studied a little improv comedy. I did a little stand-up. So I learned how those two things really mesh together. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the lessons I learned and how they really apply to the travel business. Um, This is one of my favorite trips. I'm in Africa, which I also just got back from, which is fabulous. Anyway, I want to talk to you a little bit about sales um, and really how I got started in selling. Many of you may also have done this. And if you didn't sell them, you probably bought them or are still buying them. I know that I have like the list of everybody that I buy Girl Scout cookies. And you know what? Thin Mints, maybe some Samoas, but Thin Mints are my thing. So that was probably my very first sales job. Think about for you. What was your first selling job? The reality is we're all in sales, but it's that initial Going up to the first person, when I did it, I'm going to talk about my age a little bit. Um, I did it door to door, which I know is probably not something people are doing much anymore, especially these days. To get up the nerve as a young girl to go up to somebody's door and, hi, I'm here. And getting over that fear of meeting people for the very first time and really figuring out At that that time, it was a memorized speech. I love when the little girls come now and they've got the whole thing or they're reading it because I get phone calls now from little Girl Scouts going, and I know they have their little script. Hello, my name is Lisa. I am with Troop 349. and, And today we are selling cookies to raise money for our troop. Would you like to buy a box of cookies? The price is, and I let them get through their whole speech. And you know what? That's okay. Because that's really how you get over that learning to knock on the doors, talking to people that you don't know. It's the first way we all learn about selling. But I'm here to tell you, you may think you're in the travel business. Honey, you're in the sales business. Because at the end of the day, everything we do is about selling. Selling yourself, selling an idea, selling a product. In fact, anytime you try to influence anything, whether you're trying to take to influence him to take you out to a nice dinner, or you're trying to influence her to go to the ball game with you on Saturday night, or maybe even just let you have the remote, it's all about selling. But first, before I talk too much about me and what I've learned, I wanna get to know a little bit about you. So we're going to the roll poll. So my lovely assistant is going to now bring up the poll so I can learn a little bit about you and the role that you play in the travel business. Stephanie, you got the role poll up? Yep, I am ready. So this one is um, what role you are in currently, correct? That is. All right, I'm launching. Here we go. Woo! Okay, the poll is up. 
So um, ideally a single choice, although we know we are all multitaskers. Are you an IC? Are you an owner, an advisor, an industry partner? Are you standing in for somebody who needed to show that they had taken this session but did not want to do it live? I mean, you know, I'm not here to, to judge. So, so it, yeah, it looks like this is, I'm, I'm actually really shocked by this. Most is independent consultant because we were just talking about this, you know, how a lot of people refer to their title. Absolutely. So uh, great. Actually, I'm an IC too. So what was the, can you show me the poll results? Yep. So I am going to end it now. Okay. Share results. There it is. Do you okay, see that on your end? Okay. No stand-ins. Thank you very much for no being here of your own free will. That's all good. Okay. We can close that now. I've got a little bit of idea about my audience. Now, the other thing I'd like to get to know is how long have you been in the business? So we've got another poll. So I'd like to know if you are the newbie who has chosen a change of career and you've been in the business less than a year. Oh, my goodness. In some ways, it was a tough time to uh, start the business. In other ways, it couldn't be a better time because you're going to come out of this thing like gangbusters. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you a minute or two to talk about this. Let's see, for me, gosh, I'm like right at that five year mark. I'm going to give myself extra credit. I'm going to go five to 10 years and submit my answer. Nice. Um, yeah, it looks like most has voted. It was really cool to see it. it was all over the place at first, but are you ready to see? I am. I am. Here we go. Sharing results. Two to five. Wow. So we've got, let's see, it's over. Let's see, you know, I, what, when you're getting older, I need my glasses. Okay. Yeah. So 30 plus 25, over half of you, two to 10 years. Um, and those since the last century, I love that answer. Yes. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I often tell people things I did in the last century. It makes me sound much older than I actually am. Anyway, that gives me a good idea of, um, what our audience looks like today. So uh, I want to start with a story. And um, when I was a sales manager, I had this guy who worked for me. His name was Ryan. Now, I have changed the photos to protect the innocent because he's still here in Atlanta and he knows I tell this story, but I promised to keep his uh, face out of this. But Ryan did kind of have this look. He was smart. He was confident. You know, some may even say a little cocky. One of the things I learned about Ryan, let me tell you first, I was, I was the sales manager in Atlanta, Georgia. And some people say that you might have an advantage being the Coca-Cola sales manager in the city of Atlanta where the product was founded. And you know what I'm here to tell you? It's kind of true. So, because there is a predisposition to sell Coke in a city like Atlanta. Now, my business was the fountain business, which means um, my sales reps called on places that served cups of Coke. So, you either serve the brands, fine brands of the Coca-Cola company, or you served the, the other guys that he who shall not be named. We don't say the P word. So, one of the things that my rep, he always had really great numbers. And within the first six months of working with Ryan, um, he was always coming in with good numbers. But as I spent some time and I worked with Ryan, I realized that, you know what, Ryan was actually not really a good salesperson because his, even though his numbers were great, he was getting those easy Atlanta layups. Yeah, I mean, people were predisposed to want to do what he suggested because he worked in a Coke market. Now, Ryan, the confident, cocky young man that he was, also had aspirations going further in the company. And, and I knew that about him. But I also knew, based on his skill set, if I put him in another marketplace and got him promoted into an area that might be more competitive, Ryan was not going to do so well. So it was really up to me as his leader to challenge him to be better. And I had to ask Ryan, did he want to be lucky? 
or good. And I told him today he was lucky. Let me say, Ryan got a little pissed off. He was not a happy camper. Um, and you know, you don't want to get blow up in your manager's office, but let's just say it was all he could do to contain himself uh, because he didn't believe he was lucky. He thought he was just that good. But over the next six months, we spent time talking to him about how he could get better and increase his hit rate. And the number, the great numbers he thought he was getting, they were just the surface. We worked on him being not even just good, but being a great salesperson. I'm happy to say Ryan is still at the coach system. He's been promoted many, many, many times. And we, he even tells the story to people around him about the moment that it became different about him being good or him just being lucky. So the, the question is, oh, which are you today in your travel business? Are you rolling the roulette wheel and hoping that everything comes up and your client says yes to that trip that you're trying to put them on or yes to that upgrade you're trying to work them through or yes to the back to backs? Or are you really good? You're getting that agreement you're moving through, you're getting repeat clients who are, who are playing. My, my best client today, I think, has five trips on the books. She just did her first one back since the pandemic uh, two weeks ago. She's got one another three weeks and we are off and running. I need more of those clients. So if you peel back your skill set, what do you think you are? Do you think you're lucky or do you think you're good? Now, as we talk through this, you're probably going to have a lot of questions. And I know there's that whole hand raise thing that is here on Zoom. You don't have to really raise your hand because what we're going to do is we're going to do Q&As. Think about them throughout. Don't worry about saving your question to the end. If you think about it, go ahead and put it in the comment section, in the question and answer section, or maybe even in the chat. And Stephanie is going to be monitoring everything for me. And at the end, we're going to have some time so that I can answer your questions. She's also going to monitor them for a theme so that we can bunch them together. So don't hold it in. Go ahead and put it out there and I'll save some time for questions. So you may ask, what do I do to get better? If I want to be that number one agent in my system, if I want to be the number one agent uh, in my local group, how do I get better? Shoot. I don't even necessarily work to worry about getting to number one. I want to worry about getting better tomorrow than I am today. So we're going to spend time talking about that. But to, to, to think about how do you get better, you have to first start with who are the players in the organization. So there's three basic players that work in the travel business. We've got you, the agent, the consultant, the IC, the travel planner. There's lots of different terms that people are using for themselves, but we've got that person that sells travel and we have the client. And then we have all these great industry partners, whether it's somebody like Travify, who's working with us on making us look really great by doing the itinerary integration for our, for our customers that we can get out, or it's the cruise line or the on-site lots of people. And once you know the players in the business, the other thing that's important to know is how they make money. So for, for a lot of you, this will be remedial. I mean, it is all about the money, but how do you make it? As an agent, you're going to make it by selling things. If you're an owner, you make it by your people selling things. If you are an industry partner, it's about buying through you. And if it's your client, how do they make money? Well, well, for them, it's not about money. It's about value. And the reality is when we talk about money, it's just the different ways that we identify value. So one of the things you have to think about for yourself is why should they use you specifically? Sarah, I see you there. Tom, I see you there too. You know, and you're both 
great travel advisors. But how do I pick one instead of the other and not somebody else? Do you know what your unique point of difference is? Because the reality is the more you narrow your niche, the more referable you become, the more of an expert you become, and the more people that you are known for. There's a lot of agents out there that says, if you want to go to, to just plan a trip and get some assistance, you can go to just about any, anybody. But if you want a specialist in Africa, if you want somebody that specials in people over 55, if you want a specialist that knows mountains and skiing, those are the ideas about becoming a specialist that are important. So the question you may want to ask yourselves is what do you think the most important thing is for an agent advisor or consultant or whatever you call yourself, Queen of Sheba? Uh, Stephanie, bring up the poll. Yep. Um, we put out uh, uh, some ideas of some stuff that I've seen out there about what we think people is most important. For some people, it's the knowledge that they have. For some people, it's being available 24-7. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, they've been to a lot of places. I know I've been, I think I just hit country 78, which it still blows me away. But there's still so many places I want to see. And it's helpful for me that, it, you know, having been there. And sometimes it's just uh, being available when I need you. So let's yep. close this poll and see what that's looking like. Here we go. And ah, there's somebody coming in still. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. Give it one okay. second. I'll get it to... Okay, there we go. It kind of slowed down. Okay. <laughs> it was just so exciting. Okay, there it is. The awesome. results are in. Yeah, it gives me bad tea. I didn't answer the question, so it's yelling at me. But 75%, uh, uh, three out of a four of you agree that knowledge is important. And you know what? I, I agree with that too. But it's really not important what I agree with. It's what your client agrees with. Because when you're selling travel, when you're selling anything, it's actually you are selling change. You want somebody to do something entirely different than they've done before. And especially today, uh, my well-traveled client that has all those trips on the books, the first one was the hardest. It was about her getting out of the house for the first time and getting on, a, for her, a long plane ride. And people change for their reasons, not for ours. The reason that they get out and do something different than everybody else and invest is they decide to make a change. So let me tell you, here's what I learned about buying. Here's how it works. Anytime that you buy something, you kind of go through this. Uh, sometimes it can happen really quickly for very low cost items. And sometimes it's long and much more thoughtful with spreadsheets and everything. But here's how it happens. Here's what I think I want. And here are some things that are important to me. It could be dates, it could be time, it could be money. It could be time of year when the kids are out of school. And then I have a whole list of set of options. And then from that, I select the best one. And then what I might do is pick up the phone and call you or send you an email. Yes, I know nobody uses phones like this anymore, but it was the best picture I could find. Um, and when you do this, you are lucky. And I know we all have these kind of clients, right? They pick up the phone and say, okay, I've been to the webinars. I've looked at everything. I want to be booked on, and I'm just gonna, uh, the talc cruise, um, the talc trip to China, the overview of China, and it leaves on August 15th, 2022, and I need the flight to arrive the day before. Got it. Thank you. You know what? I'll take those. But the reality is those are kind of the lucky situations. And, you know, some of us, this happens more than others, but you can't build a business long term 
based on everybody doing all the work and then just coming to you to do the sale. Because, you know, over time you become irrelevant and they just do it themselves. So what if you were able to have a conversation that was a bit different and flip it around? So when that customer or client calls you and they know that talc trip that they want to, to do, how about we work them back up the pyramid? So instead of just taking what they say, spending just a few moments saying, oh, that's really interesting. Talc is a great supplier. Can you tell me why you picked this particular trip? Okay, well, what are some of the things that you were working within? I only have a budget of $10,000. I have to go over spring break, et cetera, et cetera. And then came back with, have you considered some other options that may be available? Because people, people don't just buy things. They buy what they think that thing will do for them. Whether if they think it's relaxation, they think it's education, um, that is what they're actually buying. And the more you can stop and understand why they're buying what they've selected, the better opportunity you have at providing greater value because you know, I, you know, I bought a relaxing trip, but I bought it on the wrong cruise line where the client base wasn't exactly for me. Um, that wasn't how I wanted to spend my time. There were no activities. Wow, the average age of the client was too old. This is why, I mean, I think three out of four of you said knowledge was so important about all of the things because that's how you give options. It's also the ability to get give options and have that discussion with people is when you get the opportunity to match the best product and service to them. And you also find the opportunity to upsell them, to get them to a next level of travel. In fact, it was this conversation that I had with one of the people I used to work with at Coca-Cola with her and her husband over dinner one night. Hadn't taken a vacation in a long time. They were used to um, Royal Caribbean. And they, they loved Royal Caribbean and they did it every year. And we were talking to them about things they wanted to do, how they wanted to travel. And I suggested that maybe now might be the time to up their game. And I got the opportunity to talk to them about Osmar. Well, as you know, both of those products are great products for the right person. The opportunity to upsell Osmar, I mean, I sold them at a little bit of a higher price point, which means more money for Osmar, more money for the agency, more money for me, and even more importantly, a better fit for this client. In fact, it was so much of a fit. When they got home, they, said, they sent me an email and said, thought I'd let you know, we booked two more cruises while we were on the cruise before we left. Now, that's what I'm talking about. And that's the difference for me between, between being just lucky and taking the order and being a great sales consultant, a great travel consultant that has the ability to match the right products with the right people and get that repeat business because that's ideally what, I, what they want. Again, the more I can learn about you and refine the knowledge I have about you, the better able I am to fit the right product to you. And that makes me good. Now, let me tell you though, as we all know, customer service is absolutely important. What you do, how you do it, how you follow up with your clients, how you communicate with them on an ongoing basis, that is absolutely so critical. And it's one of those differentiators, especially as you are working with clients that are spending more and more money with you over time. The lifetime value of clients is really the thing I like to think about versus the one and done. I mean, I'll, I'll sell the one and done, but what I really want you to do is become my partner for the next 10, 20, 40 years of your life. In fact, if I look, some of you that were very seasoned in the business, I'm sure you've had clients that you've had a great deal of time and their lifetime value to you about coming back to you over and over and over again 
That's the thing that really impacts you. And the reality about customer service is I can do a great job for you. And you may tell one person, if I do a terrible job for you, you tell everybody. So what are the, the stories that people are telling about you and working with you? Well, this was my first post-COVID trip, and I have to tell this story about Jorge. Now, I went to the airport. It was my first international trip. I was going to Mexico. I went to Cancun. Um, I'm sorry. I went to Cabo. And um, I got to the airport, crazy lines, and I figured out I had enough time to either check my bag or make it through security. I chose making it through security, which means they took my sunscreen. So I'm going to Mexico. Of course, there's going to be plenty of sunscreen. I get to the hotel a little early. Um, I decide to go to lunch first thing. And when I go to lunch, I happen to ask Jorge, who was standing there at my table talking to me. Um, he said, how's everything going? Do you have any questions? Um, I told him I had just arrived and he said, uh, I said, you know, I do need some sunscreen. Is there a, a place over here? And he goes, oh, the place down here is closed, but there's a place upstairs. Wow, do you need something? And I was like, yeah, I, you know, I don't have my sunscreen. And he goes, would you like 30 or 50? <laughs> you know, I thought he's just making conversation. And I was like, yeah, probably a 30. And he said, I'll go get it for you. It was no, no, no. I, I, I wasn't asking you to go get my sunscreen. And he said, no, I, I, I don't mind. It's, it's all the way upstairs. Okay, all the way upstairs wasn't that far, actually. But yeah, he said, you're here. You're on vacation. I want you to enjoy. I'll go get it for you. Would you like me to sign for it? Or would you like me to bring down the receipt for you to sign yourself to charge it to your room? I was like, well, if you're going to go all the way up there, you can sign it for me. So a few minutes comes by, I'm watching the beach, I'm having this lovely lunch, and he comes back and he sits down a bottle of sunscreen. Okay, it's been opened and a little bit of it's gone. So I was like, mm, uh, thank you. And he goes, I'm so sorry. And I was like, why? And he goes, because the only thing they had upstairs was 15. This bottle is my personal sunscreen bottle. I, I, I can't take your sunscreen. I can't take your sunscreen. He said, ma'am, look at me and look at you. I think you need the sunscreen more than I do. And he gave me his sunscreen and walked away. And, and I was like, well, I, you know, thank you, thank you. He said, my goal is to outperform your expectations. And he absolutely did. When I met with uh, the owners uh, and the GM of the hotel that night, I told him about my situation with Jorge. And because this was such an extreme situation, um, I have found myself actually telling this story more and more. But the reality is I got a lot of good service from, by different people at this hotel. And they, in fact, uh, it's the Hilton. And they have excellent customer service. I was really impressed. And I, I don't talk about those, all of those other people that did something really nice for me, that get, did good service, that did what I expected. But what I do talk about is Jorge. I've written about Jorge in a blog. I have told agents about Jorge. I tell my clients about this hotel because of Jorge. What is the kind of customer service experience you're giving? Now, I had told everybody about Jorge and nobody else got to meet him until the last day. I'm having lunch at the same place. And this is the picture from that moment when Jorge walks around and asks if he can clean our sunglasses. He said they're going to be so clean we could see tomorrow. 
can't tell you the last time somebody cleaned my sunglasses and I might not see tomorrow, but boy, I could see a whole lot better. And I got to introduce him to the people I was with. It's like this, this is Jorge. Now they tell a story about Jorge. What about you? How can you Jorge your business? Jorge with your agents. Jorge with your clients. To be the person that is so great, that performs above expectation, starting from that first moment when they call you about becoming interested in something, all the way through the experience and the follow-up at the end. It's how you manage your customers. It, it's a thing about how we see ourselves, but the question is, in this case, they're on the other side of the lens. How do they see you? How are you making yourself referable because you do the extra special things for your clients and you found your own personal way to be unique, different, and create that repeat business? I would not be a salesperson or a sales leader if I didn't talk about goals. If you haven't set your goal, started thinking about your goals for 2022, it's time. But if you set your goals, but don't have a plan, you're just hoping. You're just wishing to get there. And as you think about how you want to improve your skills for selling, influencing, and becoming a preferred partner to your clients, set some actions whether it's my workshop or any of the other great workshops of the Travify Sales Academy, figure out one or two things that you're going to do differently and set a plan about how to build those into your business. I have a fundamental belief that if you have the ability to improve your communication to and with others, you're going to impact everything in your life, your business, your personal life, your client interaction, your favorability, people wanting to work with you. Now, we've got some time for those questions. So Stephanie, what do they want to hear more about? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So one, okay. This is kind of one that I have for you because communication, I just love the idea of, you know, it's something a lot of people don't think about and it's extremely important because it's valuable in every aspect of your business. But what would you say is your number one tip? If you have to pick a number one communication tip. It would be ask an open-ended question and shut up. Hmm. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I think we, we uh, Facebook, the algorithms and everything have taught us so much about hearing things that we already agree with or align with. So we don't get different points of view. So I think, and so that means we spend all of our time also when we talk to people and hear a different point of view trying to you know play ping pong with it. I'm thinking about my response, my idea, my, 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 what my point of view is instead of stopping and listening to you. And when you ask a great open-ended question and then stop and shut up, let me add to that. I think what you should be starting to think of is a tool I use in improv comedy called yes and how am I going to listen to what they, are saying so I can find something in their ID in that conversation that I can build off of versus just reverting the conversation in the next set when it comes to me about me and my point of view. When people feel involved, feel heard, they feel valued, they're more likely to like you, want to spend time with you and engage with you. And in the travel, in life, that's what we really want. We just don't know how to shut up in the yeah, that's awesome. I love the um, the comments in there. Well, they're like, this is a great presentation. And then Gail said, love that. Just shut up. We asked the question. Uh, so listen first, speak second. Perfect. Yes, I love that. Um, so uh, I, I also have to comment. I love that outperform your expectations or outperform the expectations. That's 
so so valuable. So love that story um, there. Um, well, when so- I talked to the when I talked to the GM, I asked him because every single person in that hotel said it. No matter what role that they had and what they were doing for me, if I asked for directions and I said thank you, they said my goal is to outperform your expectation. So I know it's something that they learn and they teach. And you can learn and teach some of this, but Jorge lives it. And that's the difference. That is awesome. Do you have, I was um, also curious too, and a question here is, did you, do you have any examples of travel advisors kind of going above and beyond, or even in your personal um, stories with customers too? Um, So I will tell a story about when I was a traveler. So uh, one of the reasons I got into the travel business too is because one of my old bosses at the Coca-Cola company, when he retired, opened a travel agency and he talked me into eventually coming to work for him. But early on, as I traveled, uh, he put me on uh, a cruise line and I realized from doing some additional research that the cruise line did not sell products of the Coca-Cola company. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I can't go without my Diet Coke and my own products and I can't drink the P word products. So I jokingly sent him a note that said, oh, my God, I can't believe you had the nerve to put me on a cruise line that doesn't sell Coke. And when I got to my stateroom, I had 12 packs of Coke. Diet Coke, et cetera. It's that little thing above and beyond that he knew that was going to be so important to me. And let me tell you, I was the most popular person on my little hall. Once people found out I had Diet Coke, they wanted to know how I got it because you couldn't like sneak it in. He had had it special ordered and delivered. So I think small things like that, remembering honeymoons, um, remembering uh, having things done. And I think a lot of people do this special when people are doing their honeymoons and stuff like that. Um, I also find out people's favorite things and try to incorporate it. So well, here's one of the things I used to do as a a sales manager is I would ask uh, everybody's favorite candy and I would send it to them at Halloween. Uh, It has like nothing to do with the travel business or nothing to do with what they did every day. But that thing about remembering that favorite thing, and that's why a CRM or a customer relationship management tool or however you keep notes are about remembering the favorite things people have, the favorite moments. There's also um, one of, I did a surprise trip for a whole family in Ireland. It was for her husband's birthday. We flew the family in in the morning, sent them out, the rest of the family in, found a pub for them to meet in, to surprise them. And then we sent photographer to capture the moment of the whole family together in front of a castle. Wow. That's awesome. They had that moment and that memory forever. And they can always go back to that. That is so cool. So unique, just so creative, you know, just thinking of, um, it's Halloween. That's your, that's the thing, you know, just, it's a, it's a random thing and no one will forget about it because who else would have a travel advisor that sends you your favorite candy at Halloween? That's right. Amazing. And and, and here's another one. Uh, you can steal this one. So the other thing I do is I keep uh, a list of everybody that gets married during the year because they spend their honeymoons with me. And in late December, early January, I buy one of those magazines that's like the year in review. Life used to do it. Now I think people does it. And I send that to them as a gift to remember the year that you were married. Oh, that's So it comes months later, but it's that thing that they always keep and they always talk about. And it captured and, and it's the thing that's in their house 20 years from now. That is that memory piece. That's awesome. That's really cool. Oh, great ideas. Everybody write those down. That's so awesome. Um, and actually a question too, just an, another personal question is, um, where did it go? Um, Someone, wait, where did I put it? Oh, Karen, there it is. Uh, Karen asks, uh, what is your, what is your niche and why did you choose it? Um, my niche is, um, 
the people that uh, is uh, single women and people that are right approaching um, retirement age. So I have defined my niche mostly by stage of life because I'm divorced and like to travel. I don't always like to travel by myself. So it's finding, and I'm finding that there are a lot of other women in that situation. Um, and they like to know that a, I, I've hosted groups like that. In fact, that's what I just came back with. I had hosted a group of women um, in Namibia and two of them, it was their first trip post uh, retirement and they never even considered doing something like that. And it gave them the confidence to be able to do that. And hopefully too, I'm going to catch them in their prime spending time. So now that they have, uh, typically they have money and now they have the time to spend the money. And that's when I want to take off for them again, because I look at the lifetime value of the client. So I try to get them in that age. Um, I, and because I'm so well-traveled, I, I tend to focus on adventure travel. That's my sweet spot. Now, the thing about having a sweet spot doesn't mean you don't sell the other stuff. But it's what I know the most about and what I'm going to spend the most time with. But I still get referrals for other things. But I also know those things I'm not great at. If you want to do a resort, marriage, honeymoon, and that whole nine yards, it's not me. I'm not good at it. I'm not going to deliver all those details. There's some people that are in that niche that do that fabulously top to bottom. And I refer that business away from me. Sometimes it's not just about what you do do. It's what you identify that you're not going to do because you can't do well. And people really trust when you recognize that, that there's something that you believe that you can't do well and dish it off to the right person. People really appreciate that as well. Oh yeah. That's a good point that you really would. I mean, if I came to somebody and then, um, they're like, I personally don't do that as well, but I'm going to give you, I mean, I'd be like, well, I'm going to come back to you when I am ready for what you do, you know, cause you can trust them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. So this question kind of goes on to, uh, communication. So, okay. um, this question is, well, so, uh, this person asked, um, how can you be nice or nicely let somebody know that a trip? Um, so I think their issue is that they've had people come and they want the trip cost too much. And they're like, ah, so, but I kind of want to tie that into how do you have a conversation that might not be a positive one necessarily? Are there any tips for that on how you can work through and still make it a positive conversation in the end? You know, I think that's a great one. Uh, great question, because it is something that we have to do um, often is people's expectations don't meet. Um, and I what I I try to understand what it is that they want to accomplish with the trip. So I step back from uh, the trip on the and I'm going to use this because it's usually a pack package. The, tri the trip on the cruise, the cruise on this trip is ten thousand dollars. I, I want that cruise for $5,000. Okay, let's talk about what are the things that are most important to you and what you really want. What is it about this trip, this cruise that's important? And then I go back to their constraints. What do we know about what they have to do? And then I actually have them weigh importance. Is the most important thing the time of year, the price, the room configuration, et cetera. And I have them work with me on the trade-offs that they have to take and make them feel the one that fits the most. Uh, I, I'll use a non-travel example too. I used to have a guy that worked uh, for me uh, in Seattle and his number one thing is he wanted to see his kids go to the same middle school, high school, and he not move. And and working for the parent company of Coca-Cola, I moved like 10 times. So you moved a lot. Um, and that's a, usually that's where the opportunities for promotion were. He was really, really great at his job. And he, but he wouldn't move. So a lot of people in that situation get frustrated because they can't get what they want. 
So I, every time there was an opportunity, even if it didn't really quite fit with him, I took it back, back to him. I asked him about it to let him know he was valued. But I also said, is your constraint still that you want to see your kids through high school? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, it's not that I don't value you and your time, your abilities. This is a choice that you're making. What I do find is the more product knowledge that you have, oftentimes you can find alternatives that are available to them or options that they have to choose between. They, they still might not like the ultimate solution, but the art of having the conversation to really understand what they want to do, why they want to do it, what they're looking for out of it, and what their constraints will typically help you get a better match um, to what they're doing and how to maximize the money they spend for the experience they want. At the end of the day, you can't make everybody happy. Um, and I have fired clients um, that I have done tons of work for, and they came back with the small, like the complaint was I did, this was a honeymoon for a neighbor. I did the whole, the whole thing. It was fabulous. Got my fabulous rate. It's a great place. And the complaint they came back when they came home was that the hundred dollar discount I got them on the spa was post-tax, not pre-tax. <laughs> so like, really? I, so I was like, okay, I listen, what other things? And they had a couple of other things, but they were like knit, knit like that. And I finally said, did you have a good time? How was the property? Oh, it was great. It was fabulous. Yada, yada, yada. The next time they came to me about doing a trip, I had a planning fee attached. I call it my PIA, pain in you figure it out from there fee. And they said they didn't want to pay it. And I said, I totally understand, but my business model has changed. I can help you find another agent, or I'm sure you can find somebody else that would be willing to help you and not charge you that amount of money. Because at the end, I knew I wasn't going to make him perfectly happy. And I would rather not beat my head against the wall and trying to work with an unreasonable client and then not be happy. And then, then being that person that's not happy and tells 10 people, it's better that we just part ways. The fine art of firing clients that are not for you without telling them no, but letting them opt out of working for you, uh, working with you, is one of the greatest skills I think that more consultants should consider. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, someone literally just asked before you said that, does Lisa charge service fees? There you um, go. <laughs> I do. Um, it, it depends on where you are in my life cycle. So there, there are people that do business with me a ton, a ton, a ton, and I charge them nothing. Um, there are, and if people call me with, I want it, and I've been, and I've done them for a while, they know exactly what they want. And I have to do virtually nothing, but call them and book it. Um, I typically do not charge a service fee. However, if what I'm going to do is a lot of time, effort, and energy, um, I do charge a service fee. It does not go towards your trip and it is not refundable. So I've done a lot of work for somebody who ultimately decided nothing asked for their money back. And I told them that what they paid for was my time, my effort and my experience. And therefore the, that fee was not refundable. Um, and they were like, okay. Yeah. So, uh, fees are something you should strongly consider. Um, you need to think about the clientele that you're working with. Not everybody's going to pay a fee. Not They may not be the clients that you want. Um, I knew an agent who worked for a couple of years and never made any money, and I didn't understand why. And when I joined the business and I was making money, they're like, I don't see how you do it. And I asked them what they were doing, and they had always sold, you know, like the carnival cruises. And you're not going to make a lot of money selling carnival cruises. It's, it's going to be hard. It's got a lot of time, effort, and energy for not a lot, a lot of return. It's the higher ticket items that you need to sell. Understanding your math and how you make money and how you spend your time is the way you're going to make more revenue over time. So that's an important thing to know as well. 
Oh yeah. Oh man, we could be here all day talking about yeah, all the fees and all the it's it is so important. It's about it's valuing yourself and you know helping out all that stuff. And and um, I do apologize everyone because I know uh, we still have questions coming in, but I'm looking at the time and I know that we still have more to share. So I'm going to uh, hand it over to you because guess what, everybody? Lisa's been very gracious to give us a free shipping on her book, which I have it and it's awesome. It is so good. So I'm going to let you share that, Lisa. How can we find all this information? So uh, Travify was nice enough to put together the little free goodie list so that you can go to. But I wanted to tell you a couple of things. One, if you want to connect with me, uh, QR codes were dead. COVID-19 um, was one of the few things that brought uh, something to life and it brought QR codes back to life. So if you hold your phone up, you can go to my LinkedIn site, reach out. I am happy to connect with you. Uh, if I move on from this and you haven't gotten it to work again, the, my connection to LinkedIn is also on that page. I'll give you a second or two to do that. And if you're still getting your phone out and miss that one, I also do a weekly communication tip update. It is of no charge. Um, hit this QR code and get my free weekly communication tip reminders. Um, they're usually based in a story form and they're pretty short. Uh, I'm not going to send you a, a 30 page thing to read. It's just not, it's not going to happen. So short, sweet, to the point, that's how you opt in for that. And yes, I have a book called Improv or Improve Your Communication, 52 Tips to Accelerate Your Performance, Positioning and Perception. It was my very first book and it was a book award finalist, which I'm very excited about. Um, it is available to you. And if you put in the code free shipping, the, the link to get to, to the book is in the Travify site and put in the code free shipping. It will come to you freely ship. And you know what? I'll even autograph it for you. Ooh, but you, I like the place to get it is on my website, Lisa Fay, F E F E Y. Yeah. Like Tina, uh, dot com. So I, I got time for more questions if um oh yeah well the the only other one um or some of the other ones were very similar just kind of about um there were some people explaining their stories of uh very similar to yours which oh my gosh travel agents are angels you guys are amazing um, <laughs> the things you go through it is crazy all the stories the we all have stories yes okay so we talked about the budget stuff um so this is this is a good one just to end on um because we touched on this and it's been literally it's been the theme the whole sales workshop is mm. just finding your niche um I, that has been a big theme so Valerie asks, and there's a lot of um, new people entering the industry, which is awesome. Welcome. Um, and um, if you're new, or even if you're just kind of pivoting your business too, um, how do you find your niche? You know, do you have any idea or do you have any practices that kind of helped you get to where you are now? Um, so there are two things. Um, one is you can niche what you know. So if you were always a cruiser, and you know cruising, you can start by niching around what you know. The other thing is you can niche around the style of travel or the age of consumer. So just think about who, if you're first starting out, who do you know and who is your target client base? What are the things they are going to be interested in? And do you have an interest in that? It's easy for me to focus on adventure travel because i love it and I do it. That doesn't mean I'm, I am climbing Kilimanjaro. I'm not that adventuresome, but I am also, can I put you on a hotel by the beach to sit by the beach and read a book for a week? Absolutely. Is that what I'm going to do? No, I really don't take vacations. I take tours, right? So I'm very active. So that depends on, based on what I know. And then based on my age group and where they are in lifestyle, is also where I go because also because I have a speaking business um, I, and I do both of these businesses, it's important. I, I grow my travel business by word of mouth. And so I do a lot of social media, 
but primarily word of mouth. People have an experience with me and recommend me to somebody like them. When you think about your niche, think about how do you want people to refer you? If you want to talk to somebody about cruises, you talk to Sally. If you want to talk to somebody about hiking, you talk to Bob. If you want to have a wedding done at a destination, you go to Esmeralda, right? So think about, and if you don't know um, what your niche is and you've got a set of clients, do a quick email poll that says, what are the, first, what are the three reasons you do business with me? Well, what are the things that, that you like that I do? And you can become the customer service person. You can become, I mean, but the niche is being, the, the, the thing about the niche is it makes you referable. When I think X, I think you. And for me, a lot of it has become when I think single women traveling safely, I think Lisa. She's out there. She's been there. She does it. She takes people on it. When I think about transitioning from work to from a working career to to traveling and seeing the world, I think Elisa, because she did it when she left the Coca-Cola company. So what do you want to be known for? Ideally, it should be something you like and you enjoy and where you're going to spend your time. And then you start building it by attending the sessions uh, put on by the different providers, the different trainings and then marketing what you're doing and knowing. Um, putting people, letting people know where you go, what you do, what you know, helps you become top of mind because I don't need you till I need you. And when I need you, I want to be able to think of you and remember you. So whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, if you guys want to see some of the stuff I do, you can follow me, Lisa Fay uh, Travels. Um, Lisa Venture, it's on Facebook. And um, I also have Lisa Faye Travels on Instagram. I heavily, heavily Instagram, especially when I'm traveling. And I probably picked up 10 new clients uh, based on the last trip I did by focusing on sharing what I was doing, who I was with, and what are the activities we were doing and making it easy for people. That's awesome. Uh, someone just said, I've taken so many notes, best description of finding your niche I've ever heard. Yes. Oh, thank you very Love much. Love it. Yes. This has been so awesome. We've got so many um, great. And real quick, can you bring up the QR code for your LinkedIn? I can. I was asking for that. I'll get, I'll make sure that's up here before I um, power down. But um, again, everybody go to academy.travify.com slash freebies for all that information too, and the code and um, all that good stuff. I, I threw it in the chat, but, um, but email us at academy at travify.com. If you have questions or issues, let me know. But Lisa, thank you so much again. This was fun. I'm, I really appreciate you taking time to chat with us today. Absolutely. And, and if you want to send me an email directly, it's easy. Lisa at lisafay.com. So easy. Perfect. I like it. Well, thank you so much again. And um, I'm going to go have a Coca-Cola in your honor after this. None of that. I appreciate it. And I am looking <laughs> forward to having a non-Coca-Cola tomorrow. Yes. Happy hour. And I hope I see and maybe even chat with some of you guys then. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Can't wait. <laughs> see you, everyone.